In London, I was exposed to television from a very young age. And when the gauntlet was thrown at me to produce, host and direct my own television show, I took up the exciting challenge and discovered the magic of TV technology. I got hooked and the fascination continues even today. Just remember, this was the early 80s. There was only Doodarshan then and basic cradle technology. When you're a pioneer, you have to be ready for a lot of opposition. I learned this from my very first television show. It's a woman's world, it's a woman's world was a glossy magazine style format with new techniques and topics never done before in India. We had fitness workouts, fashion, grooming, agony aunt, interviews, astrology and debates. The press lashed out. It's too glamorous. How could she put astrology on the show? How could she bring out such a private topic as infidelity? There were morchas outside Dudarshan. <laughs> it's amusing for me to see that today, full television shows are created on all our small segments. <laughs> I guess it was just way ahead of its time. It's a man's world. It's a woman's world. La, 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 la. Welcome again to It's a Woman's World. What is the main difference between the woman of today and the woman of yesterday? I'll tell you. The woman of today has options. She has a choice. The choice to be beautiful and fit. The choice to make important decisions concerning her life. The choice of a career. And the choice to uplift herself mentally and physically in every way to better her life. With so many possibilities open to her, there is truly no reason for a woman to hold back. No reason whatsoever, except perhaps a lack of self-confidence. It's a Woman's World is here to help you and to very gently show you the way. To start our program, we're going to take you to visit a very gracious and cultured lady who is our personality of the month. So if you're ready, shall we go? As we enter the portals of Raj Bhavan Bombay, we're going to meet the wife of the governor of Maharashtra, Mrs. Bilkis Latif. We're going to meet her not just as the first lady of Maharashtra, but as a woman, wife and mother. What would you say, um, Begum Saiba, what would you rate as uh, the three most important factors that have gone into making your marriage a happy and successful one? I feel in any marriage yes. that uh, every day is a challenge. I you know, see. one can never take it for granted, one, or at least one should never take anything for granted because people grow, every day we are growing or changing. Mm -hmm. And one has to work towards it. And if it was a successful one yesterday, that's no reason to assume it will be a successful one today or tomorrow. Something may come about to change it. I see. So, and I think as long as there's uncertainty, one puts in more of oneself. And that's on one's toes. To, yes. <laughs> Quite to a try and make it, to try and perhaps be a companion, to try and uh, see it from the other person's point of view. Like yes. if I want to do a million things and yes. I'm supposed to be a mother and a wife, mm -hmm. then I've got to decide where I curb myself, what's more important, what my values are. Hmm. What do I want out of life? Do I want to be a, a good wife and a good mother or do I want to be a writer or a poet or yes. an artist or whatever? And whichever is more important, I've got to put more of myself into that. Now, if my husband prefers it that I am with him in the evening sitting, then I think I should take it as a, 
uh, uh, something very flattering and enjoy it and do it and not take it as I'm being curbed. There is a world of exciting opportunities for women. Do you think that is taking away from uh, the dedication they would put into their marriage uh, otherwise? Yes or no, I think in some cases it is so. In other cases, um, I think women work much harder, those who are working women. Yes who are also trying to run a home, be a good wife yes. and be a good mother, stretching themselves in every way. Yes. And I've, I've worked, so I've realized when I've worked, how tired a man gets when he comes home. Yes. So I think that way it's good for a woman to work because she realizes this. Yes, quite right. On the other hand, when she is working, she's so exhausted yes. and she's still got to be the one, somehow our ways are such, we feel that it's a woman who's got to create harmony around her. Yes, that's true. So even if she's working, uh, the harmony has to be there. So however tired she is, she's still got to see that the meals are there and the children's mm -hmm. homework is there. So I think it's much harder on women. Do you feel that being a wife and a mother is as much a career as any other? Once one takes the responsibility of children, yes. I think, and of being a wife, then one has to has to, uh, I'd say, give it the yes. most importance because human relations are, uh, to me at least, mm. the most important thing. Yes. And harmony or teaching the children the right things, seeing that they grow up, that the world becomes a better place, I think this also mm. is, is something so important that uh, I, I think it's worth making a career of it if one can afford to. It's been a real... Um, Pleasure meeting you and thank you for giving us the privilege. Well, uh, I, I think it's been quite a privilege to have an interviewer like Simi Grewal. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's your kind. <candidate. laughs> I enjoyed this. Thank you. Thank you. It's a Woman's World is happy to present to you high fashions designed exclusively by India's Oscar winner Bhanu Athaya. They will transport you into a night of sophistication, glitter, and romance.
month, we'd put a question to you for our survey on infidelity. I must say, you really are a wonderful audience. The response was so tremendous that it kept our research department busy all through the month, and the letters are still pouring in. The results are even more amazing. First, up to date, 52% of the letters received were by males, more than half, that is, and 48% were by females. To the question, would you accept your partner's infidelity, 56% of the men said yes, and 44% said no, we can't. And of the women, only 22% said yes, we would accept it, and a big 78% said, no, we won't. Isn't that amazing? I was so surprised. I thought it would be quite the opposite. I'm sure you're surprised too. I think this proves that there is a strong and definite change in male and female attitudes. The men, it seems, are becoming more tolerant and forgiving, while more women, it seems, are unable to forgive and forget. I think this should set us rethinking and reviewing the whole fascinating interplay of male-female relationships. And now, should we have our little heart-to-heart -heart talk? Why do Indians look down upon a childless woman? I'm the only one in our family without a baby and I'm made to feel so useless and so guilty. How can I overcome this deep inadequacy? Please help me. Hello, Pushpa. Thank you for writing to me. First and foremost, you and your husband must visit a doctor, a specialist who will tell you whether there's something wrong or whether he can correct it. Maybe with minor surgery, you can still be a mother and be a very, very happy couple. But remember, the results of such tests can be disappointing. In which case, I'd say you should not give up hope. There are millions of children out there who want your love, your affection, your warmth. And you are a warm person. You want to give. So do adopt a child. And love him all you can. Because only by loving and giving will you be a happy person. Out there, there may be a child just waiting for you. So go out, get him home, and love him very much. I'm 19 years old and in love with a boy of a different religion. We both love each other very much, but our parents are totally against us getting married. What should we do? Can we still marry? What are our chances of happiness? Please help me. Anita, in India we don't marry a man, we marry his whole family. In a marriage that's blessed by everybody, the couple still has to work very hard to make a success of their relationship. And in your case, the odds against you are very high. There's a difference of religion, culture, language, and maybe many more. Have you got the strength to overcome these? You will need double the strength, patience, to make a go of your marriage. If you have this patience and strength, I'm sure your marriage will be a great success. I wish you the best of luck. Viewers, if you have any problems that you can't discuss with your friends or family, Write to us at Heart to Heart, It's a Woman's World, P.O. Box 16, Naroda Industrial Estate, Ahmedabad, 382-330. And we'll do our best to help you. We're happy to have with us the famous hairstylist from London, Gora. And he's going to demonstrate for us his unique art at hairstyling. Here I am with Indra today. Today I'm going to give her an evening hairstyle. With this hairstyle, you have to start with your hair wet. What I've just done is just taken a very small triangle section at the back just to remove the hair out of the way. Take a very fine section and twist the hair from the root to the end. Carry on twisting. And you have to do that all the way around. I'm using a bit of gel at the front. 
just to hold the hair and start blow drying. And I'm just drawing the loose ends at the back. I'm going to start dressing the hair now with back combing. Back combing gives lift on the roots. A lot of back combing is very much in now. Just a little spray. And you can use the dryer at the other hand. And just mold the hair into a nice row. Same on the other side. But I'm keeping the other side much curlier than this side. Just mess around with the front. Don't be afraid. It's a very easy hairstyle. I mean, one of your friends could do it for you if you're going out in the evening. Just give her a call and just say, come and do my hair for me. And please make sure you get the balance right. Just a wispy fringe, a very, very light wispy fringe. And just a few pins. Just lift the hair up. Use the tail comb. It's much easier to use the tail comb. Bit of spray. And here she is. Hair dressed to kill. Isn't she looking fabulous? Have you been doing your workouts? I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to do some sort of exercise routine at least two or three times a week. If you do yoga, that's wonderful. If not, then try badminton, swimming, walking, cycling, anything, but keep that body fit and strong. If you're a working woman and are short of time, spare even 10 minutes in the morning or evening, but do a workout. You'll find it gives you more energy, makes you more healthy, you look good, and you'll feel better for it. So let's go now with Shamali Verma.
been doing our workouts. Heavenly bodies by now we should all have. But what do the heavenly bodies have in store for Geminians? Ask Bijan Daruwala. Cosmos calling, calling. Tune in, Geminians, children of Mercury. On the spot, let me say three things about you. You are versatile, restless, easily born. Curiosity may or may not kill a cat, but it will never kill you. Your sense of timing is perfect. Alas, you can't last the pace. I have seen many Geminians who are communication experts. They are superb at reaching out to people. They can pin a man down, but they can't hold him down. That's what I want you to do. At the same time, I agree that you are good wife material, especially on the showpiece level. As a mother, not bad. As a companion, superb. Wit, humor, sarcasm is right up your alley. It is also said that if Geminians learn patience, cultivate perseverance, they could be better than the best. I must admit that the emerald suits you exquisitely. See you next time, Earthlings. That's all for now. Till we meet again next month. By the way, love, money, success, there's only one way to get them. Want them. Yeah.